Greetings, viewers. Welcome to CSEC Circle, a series of programs in which we examine the poems on the CXC English B syllabus. Joining me today for discussion are, on my left, Vanessa Glasgow of The Lodge School, and on my right, Jermaine Wilcher of Springer Memorial. Listen now to a reading of the poem, Orchids, by Hazel Simmons MacDonald. Orchids by Hazel Simmons MacDonald. I leave this house, box pieces of the five big life I've gathered. I'll send them on to full spaces in my future life. One thing is left, a spray of orchids someone gave from a bouquet, one who makes a ritual of flower giving scent. The orchids have no fragrance, but purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart. I watered them once when the blossoms were full blown like polished poems. I was sure they'd wilt, and I would toss them out with the five week litter. They were stubborn. I starved them. They would not die. This morning, the bud at the stalk's tip unfurled. I think I'll pluck the full-blown blooms, press them between pages of memory. Perhaps, in the thin, dry transparency, I'll discover their peculiar poetry. The titles of poems as we've established, I'm sure you've heard this often, are important insights into the writer's focus. The title of this poem is Orchids. And as you know, an orchid is a specific family, as it were, of flowers. Jermaine, would you summarize for us what's happening in this poem? Well, um, the poem starts with a lady, the persona, a lady who has packed up her five-week life and she's moving on. Um, she finds a spray of orchids and it is given from a person who makes a ritual of flower giving, whether it be a friend or a lover, we are not sure. Um, the orchids have no particular fragrance, but they are beautiful. The purple petals draw, draws attention, they're captivating. And it says that she watered them once and then she left them there to die. And then she put them in between a book to press them and perhaps she would find out what is beautiful about them in the end. Now, as you can tell from that summary, this doesn't seem to be a complicated poem at all. It seems to deal with a familiar situation. Very often in life, we have to go through changes, there are transitions in our lives. So this poem seems to be about a kind of transition. Somebody is moving house. And in this case, she's not taking the house with her. She's taking the contents as she leaves one place and goes to a new home. Orchids are unusual flowers in certain ways compared to what we normally expect when we think of flowers. Vanessa, would you like to tell us a little bit about orchids? Orchids are quite difficult to take care of in that you need specialized knowledge of them. They're not your typical flowers which you can routinely care for where you would decide to water them about once or twice a week and stick to that schedule. Um, you have to be very observant. You have to notice when the moisture levels are dropping so that you can raise them accordingly. So with that being said, at least the positive thing is that they don't require too much watering. Um, so in that instance, they are quite different from many other flowers that you would be more likely to come into contact with. Also, they are quite sensitive to variations in temperature and, and light. So that is what makes them very distinct. Now, as we go through the poem, notice that the first thing the persona tells us is that she's leaving a house and she's putting the contents which she's collected over the period of stay there, five weeks into a box. 
It's interesting because as we look through this poem, we get a sense that this is an individual who does not seem to become very attached to things, for whom permanence doesn't seem to be a normal feature of her life. So everything that is part of her belongings, she's been able to put into a box, or well, maybe more than one box, but it covers only a span of five weeks. And she says, I'll send them on to fill spaces in my future life. And then, this is the real important beginning of the poem, I believe. One thing is left, a spray of orchids someone gave from a bouquet, one who makes a ritual of flower giving scent. So I think my colleagues and I agreed that interestingly, she has not been the first hand recipient of these orchids, but as it were, literally second hand. One person gave them to a second person who gave them to her. And we notice in the poem that she does not seem to appreciate them. She doesn't seem to value them. They are no more important than anything else, although, as someone I know once said, orchids are called the aristocrat of flowers. They're very special, yet to her, they're not. Um, let's talk about this. What are we told about these actual orchids in the poem? Not in terms of our background botanical knowledge, but in this poem. What are we told about them? Um, we are told that they are beautiful and that there is something peculiar about them. The purple petals, more in particular, is what draws our, or in this case, in this instance, the persona's attention. Mm -hmm. And we know too, do we not, that the first thing, in fact, that the persona says is they have no fragrance. No fragrance. I guess when we think of flowers and gift giving, we normally think we want flowers that have a special scent, don't we? Yeah. Flowers that smell good, as we would say, because the olfactory dimension of flowers is important, not just the appearance. But orchids start off in this woman's perception apparently at a disadvantage, don't they? Because they have no fragrance. Mm -hmm. It is only the appearance that is attractive. Now, what's the significance of that last word in the line? Purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart. What's the importance of the word heart? Well, what it would signify is the center of attraction. So that instead of taking a superficial, a superficial, sorry, or a cursory view of the flowers, she is able to look at them in a very intense and close manner. And this, I think, triggers the turning point for her in being able to appreciate the beauty of the flowers in a very detailed and deliberate way that she did not start off doing at the beginning of the poem where she saw them as just part of the whole trifles lying around the house that needed to be dispensed with. Yeah, nothing of consequence. No. And we want to highlight for you viewers as well the importance of a single word within the poem. In this case, this is the word draw. The implication of this word is the persona did not feel any innate attraction to the flowers. There was something about them that compelled her to focus on them and to begin to appreciate them. It didn't come natural to her. So that word draw is a very important word. The poems have a power that overwhelms, as it were, the indifference of the persona. Wouldn't you agree? Agree. Okay, and then when we come to the next verse, Vanessa began by telling us that orchids need special care. You have to be sensitive to them. But notice the indifference or worse, of the persona in the next verse. I watered them once, when the blossoms were full blown, like polished poems. I was sure they had built, and I would toss them out with a five week litter. Notice that this is the second time the speaker has referred to her life of just five weeks duration, very brief in this particular place. And Jermaine, would you like to comment on that line about her attitude to the orchids? Um, here, once again, we see the persona having no appreciation or value for the orchids. Her expectations for their life expectancy is pretty sharp. I, if I water them once, it's kind of like a um, nonchalant, don't care type of mm -hmm, attitude. Mm -hmm. I water them once and you know what? They will die. And that would be the end of my time of dealing with these orchids. But I think that they surprise her as we continue, when we continue reading the poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is an age in which we are being encouraged to value the environment, isn't it? Yes. Clearly this person could do with some lessons. Yeah. 
because she's certainly not environmentally friendly. She might be conscious, but not friendly. Because you would think that with orchids being so beautiful to look at and so special, anybody who received them as a gift would cherish them. But she doesn't. In fact, she seems to be callous, as you said, Jermaine, to be indifferent. She actually wants them to die, rather than treasuring them. But as you said, the next verse indicates that these flowers have a special strength. Now, interestingly, Vanessa, how does she describe the flowers in the next verse? What are her actual words? Well, she refers to them as being stubborn. So that emphasizes a characteristic of resilience. No matter how poorly she treated them, no matter the level of her indifference, they were determined, as it were, to survive. And so I think what that does is to draw from her a kind of a reluctant admiration. Whereas before, she did not seem too bothered whether they lived or not. Their stubbornness, their determination to live has now made her reconsider their value and treat them with a level of respect that we did not necessarily see earlier in the poem. Mm -hmm. Now, viewers, we want to remind you that the one thing that all poems have in common is that they're made of words. And the poet's choice of words is called diction and is very important. So notice that Vanessa said that the orchids have a certain resilience, but the word resilience always has positive connotations. When you say someone or something is resilient, you are admiring its strength, its durability. But notice that the persona doesn't say resilient, she says they were stubborn. When we speak about things or people being stubborn, that is normally a criticism. They ought to comply, they ought to give in, or in this case, they ought to die. But they refuse to. Mm -hmm. So notice how a single word, in, again, is indicative of the attitude of this speaker to the poem, um, to the orchids. And then she tells us, rather than appreciating them immediately, I starve them they would not die. So notice this is deliberate now and a deliberate attempt to destroy these beautiful things. Of course, there are hints that the beauty might ultimately be appreciated in the preceding verse where she said, I watered them once when the blossoms were full blown like polished poems. Talk to us about that pivotal word polished, not just poems, but polished poems. Well, when you think of something being polished, you think of something that is gleaming and that is attractive, something that has been well taken care of. So it is by no means accidental. This is something that has been groomed to catch the eye. So we do see a hint here, do we not, that this speaker does appreciate beauty, not necessarily the beauty of flowers, not the beauty of these orchids she's been given, but she does appreciate that there are things in life which are beautiful and that part of this beauty may come from the care that we give them. Polished poems in this case. This morning she says subsequently, the bud at the stalk stick and furrow. I think I'll pluck the full bloom blooms, press them between pages of memory. Perhaps in their thin dry transparency, I'll discover their peculiar poetry. Let's consider now the phrase, I think, and the word perhaps. What do these imply? I think that they, they suggest uncertainty. You don't get a finality of what she will do. She probably will, she probably won't pluck them, put them in between some pages and press them, and hopefully she would figure out what is so beautiful or what is so um, valuable about mm -hmm. them. So I think once again it suggests if we go if we go back to the beginning where it talks about boxes of five week of her five week life pieces, it suggests the whole idea of the uncertainty. She's always moving. Mm -hmm. She's there's never no permanency. So I think that ties in well with her life and how she is thinking about the arcades as well. So it seems then that the woman's attitude to the orchids is not unique to orchids themselves, yeah. but as a reflection of her nature, her personality perhaps, mm -hmm. that she's somebody for whom permanence doesn't seem to be that important. Mm -hmm. She leads a kind of, as it were, nomadic existence and therefore is unlikely to value what is lasting, what is durable. Mm -hmm. Does that seem reasonable? It does. And so I think that that is quite interesting given the fact that the lasting nature of things and 
permanence is something that is attributed to poetry. Mm -hmm. And it is that kind of patience then that you would need to appreciate all the nuances found in poetry. But patience is a very thing that she lacks, which explains her quick kind of reaction or her tendency to just ignore and to forget anything that is going to consume too much of her time because she is always on the go. So we can see in this poem, brief as it is, several subjects, can't we? Yeah. One of them has to do with the way people choose to live their lives, whether they want a life characterized by fixity and permanence and deep-rooted value or they want a kind of nomadic existence. Another concern we can see emerging is the attitude to nature and how this might be reflective of our own personalities, yes? Mm -hmm. And then there's this whole question of valuing things, that sometimes we don't see the worth of something immediately, a certain duration of time has to elapse before we can come to appreciate it. And even then, the appreciation may not be full, it may not be complete, it may not be thorough. And I find it interesting that orchids are flowers with thick petals, aren't they? And at the end of the poem, the persona says, perhaps in their thin, dried transparency, I'll discover their peculiar poetry. As though, in order to value these poems, to see the worth in them, she can't quite take them as they are. Something has to be stripped away from them before she can appreciate them. I think that that testifies the layers of poetry. There, there is always the obvious layer, the one that we can take at face value. But then upon reading and rereading, we realize, oh, there is a political dimension here, or there is a religious mm -hmm, dimension mm -hmm. here. And so, as you said, with the passage of time, then you'll be able to revisit a poem and then see the same words that you read before, but appreciate that there is another assignment to those words and peel away another layer and appreciate it. Yeah, there are two different ways, three different ways that we can approach this single subject. So could we agree that the orchids in this poem, the literal orchids, could be understood as a symbol? Yes. yes please. What would you see as part of the symbolism? I believe the part of the symbolism is the whole idea of the resilience of the orchid. Mm -hmm. And with the passage of time, with the orchid itself, one of the characteristics of the orchid is, is, as I said, it's resilient. So with the passage of time, we tend to better understand and appreciate things. And in this case, it is the orchid itself. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we can take away from this poem, and is, is understanding that with time comes understanding. And Vanessa, would you like to complement this by talking about the link between orchids and poetry, which is one that the persona makes explicit here, in terms of the symbolism? Well, um, I would like to return to the three lines, which are, they were stubborn, I starved them, they would not die. To me, that lends itself to the concept of the eternal. Um, it didn't matter what she did to these orchids, they were determined to live. And time was not a factor. When it comes to poetry, it doesn't mean that because, for example, a poem was written in the 18th century, mm -hmm. that it loses its relevance two, three centuries onwards. It's something that can be appreciated after. And so it is fairly impossible to kill a poem, so to speak. It continues to survive. So you can see that kind of longevity associated with both the orchids and the poems. And we know and that in, oh sorry, go ahead Vanessa. <laughs> there is also um, the reference to, I think I'll pluck the full blown blooms, press them between pages of memory, which brings to mind the whole tradition of the prom. 
um, that we would be exposed to when we watch North American television mm -hmm. programming and the boy comes to the girl's house to pick her up and he presents her the corsage and so for the sake of showing her children what that experience was like she would usually try to preserve it between the pages of a book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right and so I think that complements once more the whole idea of longevity and permanence so that you can take a poem extract meaning appreciate the beauty no but then it is still something that can resonate later and uh, whatever you didn't appreciate about the poem originally mm -hmm. someone else can come with a fresh eye and scrape back the layers and see what you missed at the time so it seems to be some kind of ongoing revelation that you can attribute to poetry as well as orchids with the common denominator being time you need the time to see both these things both these elements in their fullness so students and teachers we would want to encourage you therefore that when you interface with literature in this case poetry in particular it's a good idea to remember that not every poem will appeal to you immediately you won't like every poem in a hurry sometimes you actually have to allow a certain amount of time to go by and then the words the power of the literature will begin to find its way into your heart just as at first this woman was completely indifferent, then subsequently hostile to these orchids, but then finally she began to appreciate them to the point where, in addition to taking away the other physical objects from the house she lived in for five weeks, she is going to preserve these orchids in the pages of, notice she doesn't even say a book, but a memory. So even though the physical orchids might be discarded, she is going to remember this experience and it is going to resonate with her into some indefinite future. Any closing words we would like to share about Hazel Simmons' MacDonald poem, Orchid? I would say the, what Hazel Simmons' MacDonald presents in the Orchid is kind of what we, both teachers and students, mm -hmm. have to engage with, with literature and in this case, poetry. We have to read the poems over and over and over again, engage in discussion, mm -hmm. put them on one side sometimes, and engage in discussion and we read them again. So in that sense, um, this poem teaches you patience and to value something that seems challenging at first. So that's why. My, my closing words on art. Well said, Jermaine. Vanessa? I think that the final line of the poem summarizes one key lesson, which is that poetry is peculiar. Don't expect to have a uniform response to every piece of poetry that you study. Sometimes you will engage with some poems faster than with others. But all of them have key messages. All of them have something important to impart. So if you do not necessarily connect with the poem immediately, don't be discouraged. Give it time because, as Simon says, it's peculiar. And the last thing I'd like to leave you with, viewers, from our discussion today is, especially those of you who are preparing for the CSEC English B exam, to consider the form of this poem. Notice that it's what is called open form or free verse. There are no set number of, um, there's no set number of syllables or lines. There is no rhyme, so to speak. The number of lines in the verse vary. Some of them are, in one case, five lines long, and the last couple are literally one line long. So this suggests to us, okay, that this is somebody coming to terms with the variation or the irregularity of a particular experience. So the form is helping to reinforce the situation which the poem presents. And also to show the shifts in the attitude of the speaker to the orchids. Notice that in verse one, two, three, four, five, in the fifth verse, almost literally in the middle of the poem, you have the verse that has the greatest number of lines as she is, as it were, ambivalent between watering the poems and allowing them to die. And then as the poem unfolds, the lines tend to get shorter, 
because she's expressing now the uncertainty of what the future holds for her in relation to these poems. So don't take the look of the poem on the page for granted. It's all part of the meaning and the experience. Thank you. This has been another episode of CSEC Circle. <laughs>